Hello and welcome once again to Rhema Praise. We are so glad that you have tuned in today. Oh yeah, right. You know, I just want to say thank you to all of our faithful uh, listeners and that partners. Watch, and partners that watch us every week. We want to say thank you for that. And perhaps, you know, this is the first time that you've maybe been surfing the channel like you do, honey. Okay. <laughs> so often. Maybe you've surfed the channel and found us, and maybe this is the first time that you've ever seen us. We just invite you to tune in every week at this same time on this network, because we're here every week. Hey, you know, sometimes people, uh, they watch us, but they don't really know a lot about yes. us. Hey, we actually have Rainbow Bible Church here in, in, in Tulsa, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, this suburb of Tulsa, Oklahoma. But there are, and we have Rainbow Bible Training College here. It's been here, we've 40 years now yes. we've been going. And, uh, but we have 175 training yes. colleges, Bible training colleges all over the world, about 47 nations. Uh, we have graduated... Well over sixty thousand graduates. There are there's Rhema Bible churches in many nations with these yes. schools. There is churches all over the world that is pastored by Rhema uh, graduates that studied in the ministry at Rhema. That's just telling you a little bit about. It. I personally have been in the ministry for fifty six years. Uh, this uh, you know, uh, in case you don't know. If you want to know a whole lot about us and know more than just that little blurb, yes. go to uh, rhema.org. That's right. And it tells all about us there. And you can find out everything you need to know. Well, we're so glad you tuned in with us today. And so why don't we go now where I'm ministering the Word. Joshua secret, secretly sent spies into Jericho, and they brought back the report. It's after receiving this report that Joshua told the people to get themselves ready to go to the promised land. And they crossed the river Jordan and they camped on the plain there by Jericho. Now, we don't have time to relate that whole story. You can go read uh, from two all the way up to where we read if you, if you want to. Now, let's go back here to Joshua 5.13. When Joshua was, ne was near the town of Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a sword in his hand. He went up and demanded, are you friend or foe? Now, the Bible does not tell us why he was near the town, okay? But he was walk evidently he was walking around. Now, he may have been meditating on how they're going to take this because up to now, see, they just, they just marched over and camped there. And uh, he hadn't been given any instructions. And so, uh, and it says that he was looked up and saw the man with the sword. So it seems to me that uh, he was sort of surprised to see this guy. You know, have, have you ever been just walking, meditating, and, and not really paying attention to things, but you had your mind on something else and all of a sudden somebody appeared in front of you and it sort of startled you? Anybody ever? That's sort of the picture I get here. I don't know whether that's it or not, but that's sort of the picture I get, okay? And so <laughs> Joshua said, well, wait a minute. He, this guy had a drawn sword. Now, uh, I'm sure Joshua was armed because most people were in that particular, would have been in that particular area because uh, they had just marched over into uh, 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 what, what we would call enemy, enemy territory because they are now having to take the promised land. And so he asked him immediately, hey, are you a friend or are you an enemy? You know, he, he, he didn't, and the answer is really one that I don't think Joshua expected he said, neither. I'm not friend or foe. See, when God comes in, he takes, com he takes command. And you choose which side you're going to be on. 
Now, you know, many times we say God's on my side. That's not a correct statement. No, it's not. You're either on God's side or the other side. God doesn't choose sides. You do. Come on now. You know, I, that's a really a good thought. I, I didn't get, I had never thought of that that way. I'd always say, well, God's on our side, praise the Lord. But really, God's not on our side. We're on his side. We either choose to be on God's side or we on the side that's against God. There's no middle ground. You know, today as you face all your battles and your physical, emotional, spiritual, uh, financial, you know, it's, it's important that you make up your mind that you're on the Lord's side. You know, a, a lot of people have these signs on the back of their car, God is my co-pilot. No way. You the co-pilot, God's the pilot. Hello? You're just along for the ride. Now, now let, let, let's look at the rest of that verse 14 there. When he replied, neither, I'm the commander of the Lord's army. At this, Joshua fell to his face in reverence. He realized, wait a minute. I am before a messenger from God. I mean, evidently this guy is, a, is, is somebody because he said, I am the commander of the Lord's army. Uh, that to me tells me that if you, if you know anything about military, that tells me that he just wasn't a part. The commander means in charge. The big dog. Hello. And Joshua immediately said, I am at your command. What do you want your servant to do? And he, he, this, this is a, a funny answer. Take off your shoes. Because you're on holy ground. So I guess we have Bible precedents to pull our shoes off at church. <laughs> now, I want you to notice, evidently this guy gave him, a me gave him the message that Joshua gave later. It does not tell us that this guy gave, that he gave him a message, but later on, it says there in 6 1 as we begin, now the gates of Jericho were tightly shut because the people were afraid of the Israelites. Now, this is a city that nobody has ever taken before. It, the walls were, were huge on it. In fact, uh, there is some of the stuff that you can read about it that said that the walls were so wide that you could drive two chariots side by side around the wall. In fact, the walls were wide enough that, that people had their dwellings inside of the, their, their houses and their apartments or whatever you call them, were inside the walls. That's how wide this thing was. And uh, notice that it says here, but the Lord said to Joshua, I have given you Jericho, its king, and all the strong warriors. So evidently this is the message that, was given to Joshua, okay? Now, I want you to notice, it says, I have given you Jericho. <laughs> In God's mind, it's already happened. Amen. Jericho's still there, but he said, I've given you Jericho. See, we need to realize that God has already done it, so to him, it's already happened. Then somebody said, well, why is nothing happening? The answer is simple. We have something to do, just like the children of Israel did. The victory was won by remembering who is in charge, who's in command. And number two, God's methods are not 
man's methods. That's the second thing we've got a decision we've got to make is, hey, God's way, it may not be my way, but God's methods are always right. Now, they don't seem right to us. In fact, sometimes they even seem foolish. You know, the instructions that he received here from the Lord is not what you would think. And I'm sure that anybody's ever been in the military would agree to me that this is not a vital plan to take a city. Let's go on reading in verse three here now of six. You and your fighting men shall march around the town once a day for six days and seven priests will walk around ahead of the ark carrying the ram's horn. And on the seventh day, you march around the town seven times and the priests blow the horns. And when you hear the priest give one long blast on the horn, have all the people shout as loud as they can. Then the walls of the town will collapse and the people will charge straight into the town. What good is marching around the town once a day? What kind of battle strategy is that? How many of you guys been in the military? Is that good battle strategy? I don't think so. I mean, you know, but that's what the Lord said. So march around the city one time for six days on the seventh day, make a lot of noise and the walls are going to fall down. I don't think that is listed in any military manuals as how to take a city. Now, I want you to notice something else that's important here that many people don't, they don't get a hold of this. They just thought, well, the, fall. the Ark of the Covenant was to be out front, prominent. Now, what does the Ark of the Covenant represent? The Ark of the Covenant was where the presence and the power of the Lord dwelt. And God wanted everyone to know that it was his power that was going to bring down these walls, not human power. But I want you to notice something. It just wasn't God by himself that brought the walls down. The people had something to do. So now Joshua calls all the people together, okay? And, and we, we pick up here in verse 6. He called all the people together. And he told them what to do, take up the ark of the Lord, and he assigned the seven priests to walk in front, carrying the ram's horn, uh, because there were probably several of them that could blow the horns, but he chose seven. And uh, then he gave orders to the people to march around the town and arm them, and the armed men while they led the way in front of the ark of the Lord. And Joshua spoke to the, pe uh, spoke to the people, the seven priests with the ram's horn, and they started marching. Okay? So here they are. Marching around the city. <laughs> now, now think, y'all don't think about this, but now, has anybody ever realized how many the number of the children of Israel was? As far as, as most chronological people and number of people can put together, about six million of them. Anybody look that up? Is that, that's pretty close to correct. That's what we're told anyway. Nobody really knows, but they said it. Now, hey, six million people marching around. I got to thinking, now how is this going to be? Because it... If they if they're all marching together, after a while they're gonna be they're gonna be ring after ring after ring after ring after ring. So I got to thinking in my mind, okay, now how is this gonna work? Okay. Now the Ark of the Covenant and the priests they got to keep marching. But I now this is my own thinking. But I, I just say, well, probably maybe after the first group. May they, when, they, when they got around one time, they went back to camp. 
And then when the next group got around until, until everybody got around the thing. I don't know. But how long would it take for that many people to march around in the first place? So they might have marched in rings around the city. Who knows? All I know is that uh, this was a different method then uh, uh, this was a different method that was used by God that never, never was used again in the Word of God to take a city. Anybody else ever read in there where anybody else ever marched around anything and took it? No. Now he gave some funny instructions with Gideon I mean, he, he pared the army down. They wasn't hurting nobody left. So he, once again, so it is God's power, not human power. Hello. So God's methods are not man's way. But when we do it the way he says do it, guess what? It works. There's victory. So, number two, you got to realize that the methods are God's uh, methods, and uh, they may be contrary to your thinking, but if you want victory, you better do it God's way. Make a decision. I don't care. I'm going to do it God's way. His methods may, they may sound silly, but that's what God said. That's what we're going to do. Amen. All right. Now, number three. The best way to get victory and hear from God so you can get victory is to make a decision to have a quiet time. The best way to hear from God is when you're quiet, not when you shout. See, he told him, don't shout. Don't even talk. Not a single word from any of you until I tell you to shout. Then shout. You know, the people here are instructed to remain silent until a certain time. Now, there's a time to shout and there's a time to remain silent. Now, I didn't know that we were going to have that video about shouting at the beginning of the service and they were going to sing the song about shouting. I just put this sermon together uh, Thursday morning and then all Friday morning, worked on it twice, two mornings. I, nobody even knew what I was going to talk about. But hey, the Lord, he, bring, he I've noticed so many times that many times that when something, part of the worship will coincide with the sermon. See, what did you start out with this morning? About shout, not be silent. Amen. But see, here, that's here. You see, there's a time to shout. There's a time to be quiet. It's when you're quiet that you hear the instructions from the Lord. Now, look, Psalms 46, 10, that one, one clause there, and it says, be still and know that I am God. Many places in the Word of God, it says we're told to be quiet, hold our peace, stand still. All of these are words that indicate that we're to be quiet. We're not to make noise. Hey, how many of you have ever told your children, stand still, be quiet, listen, and do what I say? You know, that's what God is saying. Stand still, be quiet, and listen, and do what I tell you to do. Hello. Now, number four. Number four. Victory, you have to make a decision not to quit if you want to get victory. Victory is ours if we don't quit. Now, here, you know, uh, from about verse 16 to 21, it talks about seven times. The seventh time around as the priest sounded the long blast on their horns, 
Joshua commanded the people, shout, for the Lord has given you the town. Jericho and everything in it must be completely destroyed as an offering to the Lord. Only Rahab and her would be was supposed to be spared. They weren't supposed to take anything at all for themselves. They weren't supposed to take any mementos. Now, God allowed them to at other times, but they were completely to destroy everything. Now, in, the silver, gold, bronze, and iron was to be brought into the treasury of the Lord's house. Uh, when the people heard the sound of the ram's horn, they shouted as loud as they could, and suddenly the walls collapsed, and the Israelites charged straight into the town and captured it. Now, they marched around this, this, this place one day, two days, three days. I imagine after three days, these people are probably like some of us. What in the world are we doing? Who ever heard of this in a way? This is silly. I'm tired of walking around this town. Don't look at me like that. There probably was somebody in the group that either thought that or said it. Hello. Now, as we read through this, when Joshua gave the instructions back there about walking around the town, he did not say, you can go back there and read it, he didn't say anything about that the walls would fall down when they shouted. Back in the beginning, in the first part, when he gave the instructions to the people, you can go read it. Now here it tells us, in this part, when they shouted, it tells us what happened. Now, I don't see where he told them that this was going to happen. He just told them what they were to do. You know, sometimes we get instructions from God and all we, all we know is what we have to do. We have to believe that when we do it, we will receive the victory. That's where the faith comes. Do you realize that they, that, that they used their faith? They had to believe that something was going to happen. Victory is in obedience to what the Lord tells you to do. Now, you go back in Hebrews eleven thirty, and it says, it was by faith that the people of Israel marched around Jericho for seven days, and the walls came crashing down. Now, we don't see, I don't see Joshua telling them anything but to march. And that's what they did, by faith. Now, they, they were obedient now, in, in 1 Samuel 15, 22, Samuel the prophet tells King Saul that came back from battle, what is more pleasing to the Lord, your burnt offering and sacrifice or your obedience to his voice? Listen, obedience is better than sacrifice. Submission is better than an offering of fat rams. Now, let me give you some, some insight here. The prophet had told Saul to go into that city and utterly destroy it. Don't bring back. What they normally would do when they went in and took a city, they would bring back some of the spoils, some of the cattle and so forth to offer as a sacrifice to God. But this time, God told him, don't bring anything back. He did, and he was reprimanded for it. In fact, he lost his kingship over it. Now, and, and Samuel said, obedience is better than sacrifice. Now they told, in the instructions it said, destroy everything, don't take anything for yourself, and all of the gold, the silver, and the iron, all that goes in the treasury. It was obedience that got them a victory. What am I trying to get across to you today? Well, number one, God is in charge. You can never forget that. God is in charge. Secondly, 
His methods are right even when we don't understand it or see it. Okay? Number three, there's a time to be quiet and hear from God. And number four, victory is ours if we don't quit. I mean, they kept on marching around that city. That seventh day, round we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then there was a blast on the horn and everybody shouted. And then something happened. Up until then, nothing happened except I'm tired from walking around this city. How many of you have found out how hard it is to keep believing when you haven't seen any results. But what does he tell us to do? After having done, after having done everything else, did keep on standing, keep on believing. I know you enjoyed the message there today, but you know, I want to remind you that uh, Roku is becoming a, a big deal now. Some people know about it, some don't. It, it's a, just a little box you can buy, and we have our own channel on there, and there's programs on there uh, almost continually. Yes. Uh, we have Word of Faith magazine. You, you can access all of this through the through the internet on uh, rhema.org. Dot, rhema dot mm -hmm. uh, you can download the magazine. Uh, you can watch archived conferences. And I also want to mention that you can join us live for our church services right here every Sunday at 10 a.m., Sunday evening at 7, Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. for, I call it Hour of Power, 7 to 8 yes. every Wednesday. You can do that. Also, if you're in the Oklahoma City area, you can join us on Sunday night. Live. Live. Yes. I'll be there live, or Craig, our son, will be there live yes. at 8921 Northwest Express way Oklahoma City, Sunday evening at 6 p.m. I call it common experience, Sunday morning on Sunday night. So, you know, uh, if you want to find out all about us, just go there to rhema.org. We are so glad that you, that you tune in and that you partner with us and that you help us. And so let me say thank you for helping us to bring hope, hope help, help, and, and healing, healing to, to the, the world. world. Thank you for watching Rama Praise with Ken and Lynette Hagen. Ken, Lynette, and Rama Bible Training College are committed to reaching the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and training laborers for the end time harvest. If you have prayer requests or would like more information, please write, call, or visit our website. Thank you for being with us today and for your faithful support. And remember, there is hope, help, and healing for a hurting world.